depression, it's not over. Tell discouragement, you're not going to win. I might have barely got here. I might have took everything I had to drag myself in here. But I've not got into an atmosphere of belief around the brothers and sisters here. I'm going to leave. I'm going to proclaim to hell, death, and the grave. I'm going to leave a different way than I come. service saying, you know what, I just didn't feel or didn't see what all that excitement was about. Give you an opportunity this morning to get all the way in. We got too many people that's come up to the river of life and just wants to dip their, their toenails in it. It's a river to swim in. Thank God. There's no shortness. The supply line of Jesus Christ just works in abundance. Yes. Yeah. Why do I feel so depressed and discouraged? Why do I feel like I, I can't get ahead? Why, why do I feel because that's the thing you just believed a lie? Yes, you don't have to believe that lie. That lies of the devil. Yes, God ain't going to tell you it's over until he says it's over. Yes. You gotta learn to tune out the noise, friend. Yeah. This world, that's all this is, these politics, this is the, 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 the viruses and the diseases. Me and a good good friend of mine was talking the other day. Let me tell you, there's always gonna be some kind of noise out there. Yeah. You gotta learn to tune it out. Yeah. Quit being so quick to turn to tune the preacher out and tune all that disease and death and destruction out, yeah. and you will leave a different way than you come. Hello, somebody. Oh, I feel this presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 26 this morning. Glory to God. Acts chapter 26. And before we say another word, I want you to please, after this service, I want you to go read this account in the book of Acts where Paul was standing before King Agrippa. At the end of this thing, 
Agrippa and, and, and Felix, they, they say he's not even worthy of, of, of being on trial, more or less death. But because he's got a, he's got a mission and on a mission to, to appeal to Caesar in Rome, Brother, when you get back to turn that heat on, let's maybe circulate some fresh air or something. And, and I, I, I wanted to read the whole, the whole, basically from verse number two, or, or actually, well, let's do, let's do this. You grab, grab your Bibles, go to Acts chapter twenty-six. It's going to be a lengthy read, but I promise you, it's going to set the whole stage of this, of this message. Come on, brother. You got more time than money. Come on. Amen. Amen. If you got that much money, no time. We'll give it to us. We'll use it. We'll put it to, we'll, you invest in it to Jesus and we'll put it to work. Amen. Come on, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 26. I, I might have ministered on some thoughts here before on the eternal difference and distance of almost. But this morning, I want to focus in on, on the unfortunate act of almost. The unfortunate act of almost. Hell going to be full of almost people. Yes, but it ain't going to be you and I, right? Glory to God. Acts 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa, that's the king, said to Paul, that's the prisoner. But he wasn't bound. Come on. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Isn't that wonderful to know that God will give you enough ability you ain't gotta you ain't gotta let somebody else talk for you. Yes, God can do the talking in you and through you. Paul said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine, my own nation at Jerusalem, known or, or, or know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of, of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope sake, King Agrippa, I am, um, am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible unto me that God should raise the dead? I, I barely thought with myself and that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Meaning, when I was religious, I was doing things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ. He thought he was doing right. Verse 10 said, Which thing I also did at Jerusalem, and, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. See, Paul might have not have cut... Not one of their heads off, but he gave the consent for the heads to be cut off. Verse 11 says, And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and, 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 and being exceedingly mad against them. I persecuted them even unto strange cities where, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday. Somebody shout, High noon. High noon. O king, I saw the way of light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were, we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, Jesus said to him, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for a purpose, for this purpose, 
to make thee a minister and a witness both to these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I will send thee to open their eyes and to turn their, them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inherit among the an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. Faith. Come on somebody. Faith. Faith. faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient of the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do thy and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue to this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should raise from the dead. Oh my God. And should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as, I, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud, another ruler there, with a loud voice, Paul, thou art by side thyself much learning, doeth make thee mad. And that simply means crazy or you've lost your mind, Paul. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knowest of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. And then he pleaded with King Agrippa. King Agrippa, believest thou this prophet? I know that thou believest. In verse number 28, then King Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for the things you've done and the things you're doing. Hide me behind your cross today, Lord. Speak through these lips that you've created, this heart that you've filled. Touch every knee. Walk between every pew. Visit us, oh God. We feel your presence here. We thank you for the things you're going to continue to do now. Stretch your arm this way. Your hand of strength. To touch our weakness, oh God. And Father, we will prevail through you. And we'll give you all glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, the church would say, Amen. 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 The unfortunate act of almost. Brother Claydell, in his teachings, had said one time that God had given him a man. In his, in his dream or a vision in a rocking chair. He was rocking right back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I think if I can remember it right, it was a massive cliff that he was right on the edge of. And before long, he rocked and as that, it began to rock that that, that that rocker kind of crawled forward a little bit and just fell over the cliff. He said, I went into fasting and prayer, and I asked the Lord, Lord, the interpretation of what you showed me. And he said, he said, he showed me it was King Agrippa rocking back and forth in decision. But he decided the wrong thing and went to hell. I want to tell you, friend, and I believe that that rocking chair is set on every proverbial cliff this morning, that it's, it's our ability to be right. It's our ability to get saved. It's in our concept to know the mindset of God because it's God that desires it. And don't you think for a single minute that if God does not want to, to fellowship with you for an eternity, that He won't make the provisions and give you the access and the means to say yes to Him. For too long we've used drug abuse and alcoholism and perversion. For too long I've heard people always give God their weakness instead of their strength. Because you see, 
uh, the weakness that I'm talking about is not in the, in the, in, in the, phys the, the physical man, uh, but the, the weakness of the mind to always create and fabricate uh, an excuse to say, God, I can't, or uh, uh, God, I won't. Uh, but I want to tell you, because the Bible said it's God's will for all men uh, to, to come on to be saved, uh, the Spirit of God will go before uh, you and I and turn and touch us. Uh, and in the times of our need, uh, he become, He meets the needs of, uh, and he necessitates and facilitates uh, the vessel that he himself has created. Uh, before the foundation of time, God knew uh, that where you would be and how you would be and who you would be uh, in the very time allotted. Uh, we could have walked uh, with God in the great times of reformation uh, all the way back in time. Uh, we could still be in reservoir or reserve uh, to know one day God is going to speak and we're going to be formed. But here we are over 2,000 years in a new a new beginning. Amen. Of a small a continent of North America there is situated a United States of America. And in the United States of America there is some secular states that's, that's been facilitated by something called a map. And when you look at it from space it can dwell in space it's still You'll see the hairs on your head. That's the eye of God this morning, friend. That God knows where you at. And God will still be your answer at the end of the day. Paul's halfway around the world traveling. He's appealed to go to Caesar everywhere. When he was Saul of Tarsus, he couldn't say no wrong. He couldn't do no wrong. He persecuted the church of the Most High God. But when he had, when the Lord introduced him to, to the reality of the gospel and that's that's the problem in, in the American church today. Everybody has got a mindset or a thought of who God really is. Uh, but until the Lord introduces himself to you, just like Saul, we can think we've been doing good. If we don't do any good, we do bad. Uh, and we find out that Saul, that Paul, now the apostle, is testifying of the gospel message uh, uh, to King Agrippa. For him to testify and to say this, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that the Spirit of God has already started apprehending the heart of King Agrippa. He softened the king's heart uh, because Paul even said, King, I know, I know that you believe this. Uh, oh, but friend, uh, what a problem. Uh, and what, it, the problem is this. Knowing and doing is two different things. We know to do good, but we do it not. And for those that know to do good, it is sin. sin. Yeah. Right? Now listen. So I just I want to look at this briefly here this morning. The word almost is nearly. It means not exactly, not yet, or not in fact, but very close to being or happening as described. I said the word almost will a lot of times be followed by disappointment and condemnation. How many is honest to say there's some things I almost did, but I never got around to it? Words I almost said, and you know, it, it leaves a, a vacancy w w within your within your heart. Agrippa, Agrippa couldn't blame his lost condition on on, on the being the preacher's fault because God selected the very best preacher in the whole world at that time to come and minister to King Agrippa. And at the end of this thing, after all this is said and done, Agrippa and Festus, Felix, the group of what we would call the organization or the, the law at that, that time, they said, we don't find this man even being on trial, more or less killing. But because the devil has gotten in the minds of men and stirred the minds and the hearts up of men, they turned against, uh, uh, like I said, when he was Saul of Tarsus, man, everybody wanted him to come preach in their pulpit. He was the right way, man, he knew exactly how to do it. But when he got when he got born again, when he got converted, every, his world flipped upside down. That should resonate with you and I here. If the world still believes you, you better than cornbread and everything, everybody's on your side and you never feel a, a pushback uh, on your job or in your school or even in your home sometimes uh, when well, you might not be as close to God as you think you are. It may be the whole world wants to put their hand in your back pocket and, and, and set you up on a high pedestal and tell everybody how great you are. Let me tell you, when you begin to tell this world how great Jesus Christ is, uh, you will realize, just like the Lord saw, that the closer he got to Calvary, the, the, the more 
avoid the crowd laughing. The message. I want to look at the message a little bit. The message was powerful, friend. And I thought about that. The message was powerful. The message was passionate. And yes, the message was persuasive. Why? Because it was a, it was a testimony. Yes. It was his testimony. Friend, don't ever cut yourself, yourself short. What God has done for you in your life, you need to be telling the world. Yeah. Come on. A lot of times we'll get out there, we'll learn a scripture and go out there and try to beat somebody over the head with it. But no, no, you want to win the world? You you can you be the living testimony of what Jesus has did in your life. Uh, because of and then they can say, Well, yeah, but I don't he can't do that, man. You can clear your throat and say, But wait a minute, the Bible says uh, God's no respecter of persons. For what he done for one, he'll do for somebody else. Uh, and listen, and what that does is creates faith. Creates faith in the atmosphere of the unbeliever that they can say, wait, there's hope now that God loves me enough. And if he pulled that man out of drugs, if he pulled that man out of alcoholism, if he pulled that woman out of prostitution, if he pulled that child, amen, out of the addiction, that God says, the word says, I'll do it again and again and again and again. I want to tell you, Fred, somebody, somebody help me right now. Do you know that heaven is big enough? He's big enough for all that will come. So it's a powerful message. Passionate. Paul was passionate. He beckoned him with his hand. Man, I want to tell you, I can see that old apostle. Man, he said, now listen, King Agrippa, he ain't pointing judgment. He ain't pointing a finger of condemnation, but he's just pointing. Amen. I, uh, King Agrippa, I know. I know. I know you believe. Listen to the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that testimony. It's not heresy. Listen, we, we do use each other's testimony. That's why you always testimony, the, your testimony should be about the Lord Jesus. Come on now. Amen. A amen. Uh, you know, I, I, you, I used to preach evang evangelizing people after the service. I used testimony and to, to make our points. And some people would come to me and say, did all that really happen? I, I said, well, sure it did. I, 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 no, I'm lying to you. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. Absolutely. He's, and, and, and I'll never forget it. And when it was in Swap City, Texas, or, or Ace, Texas, depending on which how, what side of the road you was on. I, I'm, I'm serious. It's Swap City there and say it's here. Come on. But we was in a little church there. And I, I preached the testimony, the power of God, seeing that, the things God's doing. And, and, and I had a young man come up to me after service and said, Preacher, you, all that really happened? I said, yes, sir, son. All that really happened. And let me tell you, did you hear me? I said, don't, don't just look at what God did. Look how God did it. Yes, huh? Right. He reached way down to pick us up. Come on. Yeah. He went the extra mile to sit on the old well. Amen. Uh, uh, the religious well, you know. Uh, uh, Jacob's well, she said. Uh, our fathers, this is Jacob's well. Jesus said, I'm the well. Uh, oh, yes, sir. I'm your water. Uh, I am your... Mm, I am what will quit your appetite. Uh, if you will cast everything else aside uh, and call out to me, the Lord would say, uh, come all that you will. All you that's taxed and burdened in your mind and in your body, where it seems like it keeps you bit straight over to see nothing but the ground in front of you, the Lord says that you'll take his yoke, his yoke upon you. We gotta share the yoke of the world. And take the yoke of the Lord that we can walk together. Now, 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 look here now. So the testimony, the message was truth. The message was told. We'll get to testify, and somebody will laugh at us or shake their head, and you'll just lose your you, you'll just lose your train of thought, and you just fall to pieces. What about when they spit in your face? And what about when they cursing you? What about when they gonna shoot you with a double barrel shotgun or stick the big old dog on you? I learned that a long time in ministry. One time, when I was brand new doing this, I went to that VA hospital. And stirred up a bunch of devils, and and I, and, that, and I was brand new in ministry, sister. But I let, I, yeah, I can't blame it on God. I let that devil spook me and break break that 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 anointing there. Come on now, of what I was there to do. I wouldn't. Come on, huh? Oh, that 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 outside noise is what I'm talking about. Glory to God. Huh? Well, glory. But I learned a lesson from it. 
So when I get in a nursing home and I'm casting a devil out of one of them old folks as a, that their arms is all twisted up like this and their tongue, her tongue's froze to the top of her mouth and, and I'm laying hands and casting that devil out and the nurse is in there pulling me and said, I'm going to spray you with mace if you don't get back. I said, I'll get back just a minute. And all, then all of a sudden, uh, the arms stretched out and she lifted her hands and then the cry in the word, Jesus! So this is truth, Agrippa. You know it is. You know it. And I'm going to tell it to you, Agrippa. Festus, you need to listen. Felix and old Beatrice, you need to listen. It's truth. Now, but, 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 but I'm, getting, I'm, I'm using those names for a reason here. There's an audience there. We, we do our best witnessing when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Come on. Because there's no outside interference. But, but the, the witness that's really going to tell the tale is when you'll stand when there's eight of them or ten of them right there and none of them wants to hear what you got to say. But watch this. You say it anyway. All of a sudden you saw a glimmer of hope in one of them's eye. But, but God, you didn't know it, but God already went before you and they begin to touch the hearts. Come on, good people. Glory to God. And you will never know. But let me tell you, if you ever try to testify for personal benefit or gain, you missed it. That's why it's all about Jesus Christ. But understand, Jesus has always looked for people just like you and I, for his creation to go, to go out into the world that's dead and lost and bound, uh, demon-possessed and so religious or whatever the case might be, uh, and tell them that Jesus Christ is still their answer. Yes. Jesus is still their answer. Agrippa's problem could have been pride. And I, I, I got a message I want to I preach about the most. There's one family that we will never allow in this church. We won't let their kids come. We won't let their uncle and aunt come. And we will not let their mom and daddy come. You know that family's name? Pride. Oh, and everybody went, oh, I thought he was talking about no. Pride cometh before destruction. Now let me say it again. That's, I got a message God had given me. It was years ago. I don't think I've ever ministered here, but when I began to read it, something welled up within me, and I just began my eyes glassed over. Pride cometh before destruction. And we got, we got our, our little imaginations of what pride is, but sometimes we stop way short. Yeah. So when will it be, preacher? I don't know. Well, God going to let me know that. But this morning, he wanted us to know about the unfortunate act of almost. Because yes, the Lord knew you was going to be here this morning. Yes, sir. And he's going to bring you, the Holy Ghost is going to bring you to proverbial crossroads and put you right there in the middle. Yes. And we spend more time looking around us and looking behind us than looking ahead of us. Yes, we need to look ahead. Look, at, look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of, of, of our faith. So I don't know what, what was, was Agrippa's problem pride was it position he was a king was it the possessions that he had or was it just simply peer pressure Felix and all the others were sitting and they were watching him but whatever it was it would keep him from the power and the presence of God okay pride position possessions peer pressure let me tell you, let me say this, and I want you to hear this now. If you can use the name of Jesus in this church, but you won't use it on your job or your playground or your schoolhouse or your... Come on, somebody. You ain't got the same Jesus I'm talking about right here. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Yes. I'm telling you, because his name is above all yes. names. Yes. It's above discouragement and despair. He yes. is above loneliness and confusion. It's above cancer and he's short about COVID. Come on. It's above everything, friend. The name, the only name that shouldn't even be mentioned uh, is the Lord. Let me, let me tell you what the Lord has done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Glory to God. Uh, we're going to be having another one of them testimony services in March. Uh, so I'll give you a little heads up. Let, let God talk to you. Amen. Uh, let you begin to talk and speak. Not about God, but you can learn to speak for God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and testify of the good things that the Lord has done. If you believe this, why don't you clap your hands and give God. I'm not 
not interested to know how, what all the devil's doing to you. That's right. I want to hear what God's doing for you. If you ain't got a testimony about what God's doing for you, you're not in the will of God. Let me tell you, you know what I've learned through the years, Elder? That it takes it takes God's ability for me to tie my shoes now. I use this in a funeral. Her, her mom and papa are just wonderful, godly people. And Mr. Murrow was a man of strength. He's old now. He got old. Boy, he got out there. He worked, man. He just worked and worked and he went with the farm and stuff. But they was drinking coffee, wasn't they? Was they drinking coffee, I think, one morning before he went to work. And I think, from what I gather, he went to get up or he went to bend down. But that was it right there. And that resonated with me that even the little things that we take it we take for granted. We took for granted and not careful that we drove down here without having a wreck. We took for granted sometimes that we got out of bed. Dear God, one of my, my daddy, Carl Walker, become my spiritual dad when I went to Jonesboro after I lost my dad and her dad. A amen. And, and, and once I've told this church this before, but one Saturday evening, the Lord spoke to me about the Sunday morning message. It was entitled Unexpected Interruptions. And I go, oh, God, help me. And we worked out. I say, we, me and him. Yes, sir. Him first, me. But he needs me. Come on. He needs me. Watch this. Yes, he did. He needs you and I, the church, to speak for him now. Because let me tell you, friend, he goes before us. His Holy Ghost goes before us and gets the prep, gets the ground, begins to touch the hearts. But he he comes. We, we bring the seed of God. Amen. The word of God. But, oh, Brother Carl, he worked at the meal and, and, and uh, went to bed that Saturday night. Sister Evelyn gets up very, very, very early on Sunday morning because she gets the family over there to have lunch. Amen. So she gets up a couple of hours before he gets up and starts preparing that where they can just get it going, you know, get it done and go to church. Uh, well, she called him and said, I had his coffee ready, Carl. And Carl didn't move. And she Carl and she said, that's, that's strange because he he, got, he likes to get on up and drink coffee and pray, you know. And uh, he didn't move. So she went in there and he's dead, laying in that bed. No struggle, no pain, just dead. And I thought about that. God, without your breath, we won't even get out of the bed in the morning. Come on, son. We take this life for granted. If not careful, we 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 abuse this. Let me, let me, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You know how we abuse this old mindset so much? We let fear and doubt persuade us or, or, or talk us out of what God wants for our life. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Well, is it you can't or you won't? Listen, listen to me. Because you've got to train your mind. Amen. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in what? Christ Jesus. Uh, but there's a lot of times, Sister Judy, my mind says, ah, you ain't fixing to do that. You could have done that when you was 43, but now you ain't fixing to. I said, well, devil, God, help me now. Come on. Well, and then all of a sudden, I've reached to get something before the Lord. The Holy Ghost said, you better let that alone. You better wait on one of the younger men to come help you with that. Yes, sir. I quit trying to prove to the world my physical strength a long time ago. I've learned the hard way. When I like my mind to be so polluted by discouragement or fear or whatever might the thing I was battling. And I realized what the Word of God told me. He gave the church power to possess the, the, the strength of the Almighty God that we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I ain't got to go home and be bound. I ain't got to go home discouraged. I don't have to go home fearful. I'm going to stand on the principles and the prayers Here's Agrippa. Here's a scene set. Now, here's one old lonely preacher by himself. And he's got the most influential, the most people that's got the most influence of their whole, not only community, but their whole nation at that time. And he's preaching to them. <coughs> oh, sometimes we ain't careful. We're a little reluctant to tell rich, them rich people about Jesus. Why? 
I might have ten dollars in my bank, he might have ten million in his, but we both put our feet yeah. in our pants legs and pull on. Come on. We both cut our fingers, we both gonna bleed red. And we both, in our hearts, got the same opportunity, heaven and hell. Come on, somebody. We get intimidated. That's why I said yesterday there was such a tool there. Not just to help those out there, but to help the body of Christ take that step. Huh? We'll, we'll, maybe this year we'll take y'all some, 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 some places where they, they, they will oppose you a little more than just turning their head from. Oh, yeah. Oh, you ain't never had the power of God come on you until he opens that screen door and he's holding that big rock wire and that thing's like, rah, rah, you know, foaming out of his face. I'm going to give you about three seconds to get off my property. I'm going to let this dog go. I said, you'll just give me two extra seconds. <laughs> come on. Now, I ain't no fool. Come on. Yeah. I ain't fixed to try to lay hands on that monster down there. But I'll believe, I'll believe God that God's going to allow me to get off that property and, and hold the mouth. Come on, shut the mouth. God don't only really shut the mouth of the lions. He'll shut the mouth of the rock water too. Oh, listen, friend. Man, a rock water. I'll tell you, I've had poodles put me in my place. Come on. Amen. Tim Little, what you got to watch. Little, little, little heel nippers. That's why the Bible said it's little foxes for the vine. Yeah. It's them little dogs that are coming back to make you bleed out the ankles when you're trying, you're trying to shake that thing off. And, it, and it's got a bulldog hold on you. Glory to God. I want to tell you, friend, whatever it was, if it was pride or position or possessions or peer pressure, but whatever it was, it kept him from the power and the presence of God. So you and I now, we, we can get caught up in the trap of almost doing and fall miserably short because of the uncompleted good intention. I said we'll fall miserably short because of an uncompleted good intention. Old folks used to say, old preachers used to say, the road to hell is paid with, all, with good intentions. Yes, sir. Come on now. We almost helped somebody on the side of the road. We almost call someone that's discouraged. We almost came to Sunday school. We almost paid our tithes. We almost made a visitor feel welcome. We almost got involved in the church. And listen, those that almost got in will definitely be left out. I said those that almost got in will be definitely left out. Give me that this morning. And they just started stirring my heart again. You remember the ark? Yeah. Hunt, Brother Greg, 120 years, that old righteous preacher built on that ark. Boy, don't you know he would have loved for a congregation to come and not only hear the word but believe the word yeah. and say, Preacher, let me get in here and help you. I want to be a part. I want to be a part of the, of, of, of the sanctuary of God. I, I, I don't want to be a problem. I want to be the answer to the problem. But for 120 years, he preached and without any amens. Three sons and three daughter-in-laws and a wife now. But oh, but I want to tell you, but when it was time and the door came up, it was over with. There is no more second chance. How many of them said, I almost, but because of my relatives, or I almost, but because of my job, or almost because of my wife. Come on, almost because of my husband. Or almost, I didn't do it. And how deep did that rain and that water have to get on the earth before they realized that they had no chance? Yeah. What about about midnight when that horn blew? Mm. Arise, go out and meet the bridegroom. All ten of them is sleeping. But five of them have done more than almost. Yes, sir. Five of them was prepared. Oh, yeah, they had extra oil. Remember Sunday school this morning? That oil. You've got to have that oil, friend. You've got to have the substance, of the lifeline of Jesus himself, the oil or the anointing of God. Glory to God. Man, I'm going to tell you, there's Pentecostal ranks. Oh, that, that man, they said, well, we got to get them this altar. They got to speak in tongues. Come on, speak, speak in tongues. Come on, let me push your head down and break their nose, and we'll get a response out of them. Come on. Oh, and then they jump up and celebrate. Woo! 
Oh, look here. He said he's going to heaven because he spoke in tongues. Uh, come on, get the water drunk. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you, there ain't no there ain't no life in that water. That water is a fulfillment of a command by Jesus. Uh, we've seen a lot of dirty ones be dumped and a lot of dirty ones get out. Amen. Uh, and this thing about speaking in tongues, uh, you're going to speak in tongues if you get impregnated by the power of God. But I've heard a lot of devils say some gibbers and go right out them doors and curse somebody. Did I tell you, God is not in that. They get their hair just right, them sleeves just right. Come up here speaking. I used to have a, a, good, a good friend of mine, but I just he, he would amuse me. He'd call me, oh, brother. He said, you still in the name? Oh, I'm in the name, brother. He said, ooh. He, got, he, had, he had an expression about himself. He said, man, this old, I, this old man, we, I, I ran spoken tongues half the night. I said, that's good, brother. Glory to God. But how'd you act when your feet landed? Come on, somebody. Don't you dare think I'm, I'm disallowing anything, the, the, the blessings and the power of God. We all need to be full of this Holy Ghost. But can I tell you what? You get full of the right Holy Ghost. Come on. You're going to love people. Oh, yes, sir. Come on. You get, you get full of the Holy Ghost. Hey, 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 amen. Well, I, I, I can't hug that one. That one don't smell like it. They use a different perfume than I use. Come on. I don't care. It's Pepe Le Pew's number one fragrance right here. Hey, come on, somebody. When you fall in love with Jesus, you'll fall in love with people. Oh, my. You don't get back up here to hide from him. Well, I'm talking, come on. I'm talking about the, the, the power. You see, Agrippa's sitting there. Agrippa's religious. Felix is a re religious. Uh, Beatrice, oh, yeah, they're all religious. They all believe something. You see, don't worry about it. The Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Jew, Irish, whatever. No, no. They, everybody's religious. Them Satanists, they're religious. Come on. That atheist, oh yeah, he's religious. He believes something. We all believe something. But it ain't but one class of people is going to heaven. And that's the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Somebody. Oh, I said now. Those that almost got in will definitely be left out. See, almost people are those that's on the outside looking in. Almost people are those that never seems to stay connected. Again, I'm not picking on Pentecostal. That's what I am. I'm, I, I'm Pentecostal because of experience. Yes, I don't have to have a, a, a business card that says I'm Pentecostal. I don't have to, my t-shirt don't have to say it. My cap don't have to say it. I've got an experience. You've got an experience with the Spirit of the Lord. We're, we believe in a Pentecostal way of that. That Bible's Pentecostal. Yes, sir. Yes. But Pentecost was a day celebrated that was, that's already been in happening and it's still in happening today. Right. It was a festive day. It was a time though that God allowed in a lot of that if people obeyed His voice that He was going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay? So, so uh, I, I say all that to say this. You know, at, at times, if we're not careful, we, we, we disallow too much, of, too much of, of who we need to be. You know, uh, again, we, 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 we don't stay connected. The, then the Pentecostals use this in church, out of church. You ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, he's in church. But is he, is he the church, though? No. Oh, she's a, you know, she's a, where's she at? She's out of church. That sounds like to me that's a revolving door. Mm -hmm. Hot one minute, not so much the next. Fire, fiery man one minute, and then where'd they go? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, don't you know they had a flat? And they were late for work, and the boss griped at them, so they backslid. Mm -hmm. Now, to backslide, you've got to actually be connected to something. Yeah. Yes. And we use emotions in not is this all right? Yeah. We use emotions sometimes to govern our our behavior. Man, you should let me, let me tell you, I'm, I'm not talking to I'm not talking to a bunch of wayward sinners in the streets. I'm talking to supposed to be God's people here, right? Yeah. Are you God's people? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Right. Let me ask you again, because I got three hands and about six amens. <laughs> oh, you God's people. If you don't know if you God's yeah. people or not, come yeah. you're not. Come on, bro. Well, how dare us to come to the house of God and just sulk, uh, sulk, the old folks you say sulk, yes. and say, well, you know what you're telling God? God, I don't believe that you can do. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh, my. I'm telling you, the gospel truth. 
Well, why do you say that, preacher? Because the word says different. Enter. Yes. His courts with praise. Come on. We should come in, man. Oh, I'm here. I'm made. Who am I to fall all hell? Somebody said. Yeah. Somebody said I did have a flat tire. <laughs> Glory to God. I know. Old, old battery was dead, but thank God I had jumper cables. Yeah. That's what yeah. Holy Ghost is to you and I. Sometimes oh. He'll jump us off with more of His power. But oh yes, sir. He give us a He give us a, a desire called an alternator in there to charge us back up. Yeah. Glory to God to keep us to keep us moving. Man, we ain't got no time to give the devil glory. I ain't got no time. If, do you know it takes more facial muscles to frown? than it does smile. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if not careful, we, we actually witness and testify of what the devil's doing more than what God can do. I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about this morning the, the unfortunate act of almost. To remain almost persuaded is to be eternally lost. To be almost persuaded. And King Agrippa said, Paul, you almost persuaded me. But he's, he's forever lost. Who knows? God might not drew him no more. Maybe that was, it. That, was his, that was his opportunity to seize the moment. Yes, sir. You've been brought here by divine plan of God himself today to seize the moment. You've been, you're here not by accident or coincidence. And then I want to tell you, just so, sometimes just coming out of conscience won't, won't keep you coming forever. No, no. I want to tell you that you got to have a heart, amen, governed by the Lord. I commend. Most of us drive a pretty far distance coming here. But you know what? That don't get us to heaven. <laughs> and that don't get no star by our name. We just committed to God. I know what God told me to come to church. And God didn't tell me just to come to be a bump on a log. He said he told me to come seeking and I shall find. I'm still stirred about the other messages I heard the other day. My God, I got a board home after me. Glory. Name the devil. But we can bind that thing in the name of Jesus. We can seek the Lord and give not only the permission but the power of the Most High God. Yeah, yeah. Woo, go have another one. March. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, now, 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 let me tell you how this works. Be careful. All of a sudden, ooh, man, I felt some Holy Ghost on me last time. I think I'm going to add this little extra to this and I put a little bit of this over here. That'll get you in trouble. Yes. Yes. You just let the Lord give it to you and you write it down. Yes. Come on. Amen. Come on. Let God's expression come out of you as freshness. Amen. Man. Almost, Paul, you persuaded me to be a Christian. Dear God. How many people? How many people of the names? And we put a bunch of them. That box is full. But that box, Brother Greg, just ain't full. Every time we open it, we got to push it down. And push it down. I just no telling. I guarantee you there's thousands of names in that box. We just push them down and push them down. And God's, God's love and grace knows every one of them. Yes. God's amazing spirit and love can look at every prayer box in the whole world and see the needs. That's why, you know, some, some religions that uh, stop and let one pray. And he'll fool around and pray the same prayer he's prayed for 12 years. It, but God hears all the prayers. Right. Now, we, we, pay, we pray specifically sometimes. But a lot of times we say, lift, our, lift your hands and pray. Lord, because we believe by faith that God's got an ear that he can discern every one of them. Come on. He can stretch his hand. Glory to God. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, uh, he can meet the need. He can make the way. It, it, he, he don't need no, no a lot an hour or day or year or month or whatever. God can do it all at one time, but God chooses not to do it all at one time to bring you to a place on crossroads to make you a, a people of faith. Uh, because if God answered your prayer this quick every time, you get high-minded. Oh, here we go. You go prideful. Glory to God. You would think you've done it. You think you have the ability. The only ability we have is the Jesus Christ in us. We almost done as Brother John comes. Christ is coming back for a bride. Now watch this. Now we, the, the, the word today we've been dealing with is almost, right? But Christ is coming back for a bride that has made herself ready. Yes. That has. 
has now is something that's already been performed. Glory to God. I think we're on a we on a we on a tremendous pivotal point here today. The momentum of the of, of, of forward progress is 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 been activated by God again. And we desire, man. We've been having how many of us we have some great services. Yeah. Am I the only one people? That's why your pastor, when he starts a service, he looks and sees them empty seats out there, and he gets concerned. Yes. Don't sell up at me. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because you miss an opportunity that you can come and be supported by others. And I know some religious is I don't need nobody else. They are more spiritual than me anyway. We need each other. Come on. I busted both of my thumbs and they, they, they busted, they heal it finally, they heal it. But I couldn't, I can't grab none of these like needles, just sticks them in. It just, it's a horrible thing. You know, when it gets cold like this, your, fan, your hands bust. So the other night she put these big old wide bandages and I said, that's the goofiest looking thing. <laughs> Dipped them in Vaseline and, and I've been using Neil Sporge and she put them big old things. I look like E.T. or somebody. You know? <laughs> and uh, and I, I said, but, but you know what? She said, you're going to bed. You ain't got to grab them. Right. Right. Boy, the next morning I took them things off and they were better. I said, well, maybe she's on to something. Here. <laughs> huh? But what I'm saying you can get so crippled in yourself that she had to put the bandages on my fingers. Yeah. And we need each other, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We need each other. And I don't tell you this to fuss at you. I tell you this because I'm concerned about you. That the, the, the more we on the outside, the harder it's going to be to, to get back in and be connected. Yeah. I've went into churches before. First time I've ever been there, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little slow, looking around. But some of the churches made me feel like a visitor. But somebody says, but I am, you are a visitor. No, it shouldn't be. Not going to be the body of Christ. But, they, but they'll shun you or something like that. But then I've also heard of people going in with that chip on their shoulder expecting to be treated like a visitor and when people reached out they just you find the body of Christ you find a body of believers that loves you that will encourage you that all comes to a place in our spiritual life there's at times we got it brings us to that crossroad we must decide who we're going to be in God and God cares for you enough that He will allow you to make that decision yes, sir. without any outside interference. But when you proclaim it, and when you stand on it, and you say, God, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm in it till you receive me. I'm in it to the end of our duration here on this earth, or that grave, either one, but I'm in it for the long haul. You don't have to be bent over in that, that sprint position anymore. You can stand upright. You can throw your head back, lift your hands, and glorify the resurrected Christ. Can you say amen? amen? And I said all that to say this. Don't get, don't get caught rocking back and forth. You know what that interprets to me is don't, don't be so tossed to and fro by every wind of dollar. People will watch that video and they'll say, oh no, it ain't like that. They've got that privilege. But I know it's like that because the Word of God says it is. And I'm not moved by that. Them religious devils will put you in bondage. Come on. Them religious devils, they'll get mean-spirited and put you in bondage and all that. You shut that mess off. You're free. Yes. Come on. How many's free in this place? Yes. Huh? You're free. To the sunset, free is free indeed. You've been liberated. Why would you want to be entangled again in all that craziness? These all died in faith. Hebrews 11 and 13 and 14 says, Not having received their promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of. 
and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. If, I was gonna, if, if this was the beginning of the service, we begin to preach. I would preach off of that thought right there. They were persuaded. And how many knew, how many knows I believe a message time would have to be like this. The proof is in the persuasion. Yes. Yes. They're persuaded. How, how are we going to say, oh, I know how? Because they embraced them. Yes. They confessed it. And they knew that they were just nothing more than merely strangers. Brother Greg would peel them just to walk you through. Yeah. Brother Chris, we just, we just, we just, God's, God's longest some children. Yeah. That calls us mom and daddy. God's opened the doors to make ministries and, and, and opportunities. But at the end of the day, it all belongs to God. Amen. It all belongs to God. Won't you stand right now? And say, I have been persuaded. There's no guesswork in me. For my hope is of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how many knows that's the only hope we really need, friend? So he's doing something special within you in this church he's doing something special so just yield yourself to the Lord say God teach me God show me God help me and I promise you that the Lord the Lord himself will illuminate and light up your path and he'll give you the, the strength that you need to accomplish the task. Tonight, well, I say tonight is past 12, though it is tonight. But this evening, we, we look and we say, God, I need a touch from you today. For my hope is seen to dwindle. For I've lost my praise. I've, whatever it might be. And you might be here on the mountaintop. Well, you know what? we got family that needs us to pray for we got people on our jobs and in our schools and wherever we find ourselves needs us to pray for them. God, give us the, the church the ability. Father, as we open these altars right now, oh God.